Just take your Bibles, if you will, this morning to... Um, now, this is the season of the Advent, and we preach uh, usually in celebration of Christ. And what I'm going to speak, uh, the subject I'm, I'm going to speak on this morning may not appear to be in uh, celebration to Him, uh, but it, it really is. I, uh, early this week, I just heard someone make a statement, and it just exploded in my heart. And uh, so I began uh, putting this together, and uh, I hope that it will help us today. I hope it will cause us to realize who our God is, and uh, how powerful that our God is. The Bible said in Exodus chapter 20, verse 4 and verse 5, You must not make yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other God. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in third and fourth generations of those who reject me. Father, I am so grateful this morning, Lord, for this wonderful season. I really mean that, God. Thank you that we're celebrating Jesus. Lord, we are living in a most crucial, crucial critical hour today, probably ever in the history of mankind. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will help us as a local body of Christ to be alert, to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, to be sensitive to one another. I pray, Father, this morning that you will use me today. I humble myself before you and before your people that are here today. I pray that you will use my vocal cords. I pray that you would allow me uh, to be your mouthpiece today. And God, I pray that you will go before me just now. Prepare the hearts and the minds of the people that we will receive the word of the living God. We love you today. And as always, Master, if there's anyone here that does not know you personally, then God, let this be their moment in time. Go before me just now, Holy Spirit. And as always, I will be very cautious and very careful to give your name honor and praise and glory that it is worthy of. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Moses, under the influence and the inspiration of God, said, speaking for the Lord, For I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Everybody say jealous God. Jealous. That almost when you just say that, that doesn't seem like God, does it? But for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not, who will not tolerate your affection for any other God. I want to used for a subject this morning in a question form, and that is, why is God a jealous God? Why is God a jealous God? I think this is a wonderful time of the year for us to consider this today. The Bible repeatedly declares God to be a jealous God. Over and over. Old and new. And I'm going to reference both today. But the scripture repeatedly declares God, Almighty God, to be a jealous God. But what causes Him to be jealous? If He is a jealous God, what is it that causes him to be jealous? Why is he 
a jealous God. And we all know there is a reason for everything. So for God to inspire the biblical writers to declare that He is a jealous God and that He will not, there's no speculation, no surmising, wondering what God is saying here. He's saying, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other God. Now, I want to lay this foundation like this. And I, I, I want this to get into our spirit. I don't know whether... Uh, and, and now, I will tell you this. I search the... I have what um, uh, they call sermoncentral.com. And I think there's like 100,000 plus manuscripts, study material, sermon outlines, and... When I heard this statement made the other day, what, what, what I heard was, I heard a, a preacher say on TV, Every, everyone wants everything from God. Everybody seems to want all they can get from God. But he said, God wants everything He can get from you. Yes. And when he said that, it triggered this study in my spirit. And I hope this will help us today. It is important to understand how the word jealous is used. It's used in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 5 to describe God is different from how it's used to describe the sin of jealousy in Galatians chapter 5 in verse 20. I won't take time to read all of these passages. Yeah. Um, let me say that again. It is important to understand how the word jealous is used. It's used in Exodus 25 to describe God is different from how it's used to describe the sin of jealousy in Galatians chapter 5 verse 20. When we use the word jealous, we use it in the sense of being envious of someone who has something that we do not have. A person might be jealous or envious of another person because he or she has a nice car, he or she has a nice home, or has nice possessions. Or a person might be jealous or envious of another person because of some ability or skill that other person has. Or... One person may be jealous or envious of another person because of his or her beauty or attractiveness. In Exodus chapter 20 verse 5, it is not that God is jealous or envious because someone has something he wants or needs. It is that God is jealous when someone gives to another something that rightly belongs to Him. And in these verses, boy, God spoke something to my heart. In these verses, God is speaking to Israel about making idols and bowing down and worshiping those idols instead of giving God the worship that belongs to Him alone. Yes. Yes. It is a sin to worship or serve anything. Everybody say anything. anything. It is a sin to worship or serve anything other than God. It is a sin when you desire or are envious or you are jealous of someone because he or she has something that you don't have. I mean, never wrestled with that. You know, you saw something. Mm, man, I, you know, we, yeah, we've all had struggles with it. It is a different use of the word jealous when God says he is jealous. What God is jealous of belongs to Him. That is, worship and service belong to Him and are to be given to Him and to Him 
alone. And if you believe that, would you just give the Lord a grand hand clap of praise and worship? How do we give God a hand clap of praise and worship this morning? Let me use a practical example. Now, and before I get into this, I, I don't, I don't, don't someone go off the deep end. We're loving people here and we kiss each other on the cheek just so you won't get your defensive up and think I'm preaching against that because I'm not. That's not even the thought here. But let me use just a practical example. If a husband sees another man flirting with his wife, he is right to be jealous for only he has the right to flirt with his wife. This type of jealousy is not sinful. Rather, it is entirely appropriate. Being jealous of something that God declares belongs to you is good and is appropriate. This little lovely lady said into uh, Leonard Harbaugh's uh, right, only he and he alone has the right to flirt with her. This lovely lady that is sitting uh, to the right of, of Jeff Urich, uh, Renee, only Jeff, listen, I'm going to make a point here. Only Jeff and only Jeff alone has the right to flirt with her. Only Jeff and only Jeff alone has the right to kiss her on her lips with any kind of emotion. Now that's not what I'm going to preach about. I'm trying to <laughs> sound pretty good anyway, didn't it? Huh. I really don't consider myself to be a jealous man. But if you think you're going to kiss my wife like I kiss my wife, you missed something when you got out of bed. <laughs> Let me say that again. Because I'm, I'm, I'm building a foundation here for this subject matter. This type of jealousy is not sinful. Rather, it is entirely appropriate. Being jealous of something that God declares belongs to you is good and appropriate. Jealousy is a sin when it is a desire for something that doesn't belong to you. You don't have to have a degree in physics to figure that out. You don't have to have a doctor's degree in theology uh, to understand that. Hallelujah. But jealousy is a sin when it is a desire for something that does not belong to you. Now listen carefully. Worship and praise and honor and adoration and glory and on and on and on belong to God alone. For only He is truly worthy of it. Therefore, God is rightly jealous when worship and praise and honor and adoration and glory is given to idols. You may say, well, Pastor, I don't have any idols. Well, let me finish this message. God told Israel, I will not tolerate your affection for any other God. Amen. That's strong words. Jesus. That's strong, strong and powerful words. This is precisely the jealousy the Apostle Paul described in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2 through verses 4. And Mackenzie, honey, if you will... Just kind of pay attention. I'm not exactly sure when I'm going to uh, show this uh, uh, picture. But this is precisely the jealousy that Paul described in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2, 3, and 4. Paul said, for I am jealous. 
And I'm sure if you are a student of the Word at all, you know the Apostle Paul never made statements and never declared anything just in a you know, foolish manner or what. But he said, I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God Himself. And he defined and expressed why he felt the way he did. He said, I promised you, he was speaking to the church, he said, I promised you as a pure bride to one husband, that being Christ. But then he says, I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted even as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. Then he said, you happily put up with whatever anyone tells you. Speaking to the church. He said, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach, or a different kind of spirit than the one you received, or a different kind of gospel. Neighbor, I want to tell you there's not but one gospel. One gospel. Paul was jealous. Everybody say jealous. Paul was jealous with the jealousy of God himself. Because someone with another gospel was endeavoring to deceive the body of Christ. Something that belonged to God. Can I tell you this morning that the church of God, not this building, but that the church of God, not this denomination, but the church of God exclusively belongs to God. His Son Jesus, the body of Christ, the church of the living God, the church of Jesus, Jesus is and was and shall continue to be this espoused to this church. Hallelujah. And it belongs to Him. And Paul saw that deception was creeping in to this local church at Corinth. And he said, I'm jealous for you just like God Himself is jealous. Psalm chapter 78, verse 58. They angered God. Well, I'm telling you, we are headed for a rude awakening. We're not going to continue as we are. I promise you, if you believe anything that I have preached from this pulpit in six and a half years, you believe this preacher this morning, this world, this country is not going to continue on the same trail and the same track that it has been for decades. Because God is jealous for us. That makes me feel good, knowing He loves me enough. <laughs> to be jealous when somebody's messing with me or to be jealous and upset with me if I'm messing with somebody else. Yes. <laughs> they angered God by building shrines to other gods. They made Him jealous. They made God jealous. They made God jealous. They made God jealous. Made God jealous. Yes. They made God jealous with their idols. We often think of jealousy as a bad thing, something we should avoid because man's sinful heart covets what others have. God's jealousy, however, is appropriate and good. God's jealousy is in regard to idolatry, which is worshiping anything other than the God of the Bible. God is jealous for the people to acknowledge Him as the only real, only real and living God, and worship Him as such. God said, I'm going to repeat this several times in the next few minutes before I get through the sermon. 
God said, I will not tolerate. Everybody say tolerate. Everybody knows what tolerate is. God said, I will not tolerate your affection for any other God. Look at somebody and say, I want to be careful. God is not only described as jealous, but jealous is given to him as a name. In Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, you must worship no other gods for the Lord whose very name is jealous. Whose very name is jealous is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. Look at somebody say, that's that's you. That's us. My my. I, I hope the Lord will edify your heart through this. I hope the Holy Spirit will give us ears, spirit of understanding. Hallelujah. This shows that to be jealous is one of God's attributes and is in fact an outworking of His being. All of God's attributes are equally true, so God is never unjustly or unfairly jealous, but always righteously jealous. God is a good and holy God. Who not only deserves all praise and all honor, but who also cares that people have what is best for them. And listen, and God knows that He Himself, and God knows that He Himself is what is the very best for mankind. Almighty God knows that He is what's best for me and He is what's best for you and He is what's best for this God awful, vicious, mean, ugly, terrible spirit world that we are living in here today. Amen. Amen. I'm going to have me preach this so I get all that was Oh, our God is a consuming fire. Yes. It still is a fearful thing. During the holidays, during celebrating Christ's birthday, it still is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Why is God a jealous God? God is the one true God who created the world to be in fellowship with Himself. He created this world to be in fellowship with Himself. Oh, I, I think I, I, just, you just have to bear with me this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm not stepping away from the message. I'm, I'm adding that I just didn't, couldn't get this in there. And I've asked her I've asked Mackenzie, and I was so thrilled. I, I received this. You probably can't see this. Yeah, you can see that. And I was going to stand out in front of you this morning and hold this little card. I received it from the pregnancy center because we had given us a time or two for our pregnancy center here. And they sent this uh, to me this week, and this, this message was burning in my spirit. And I, uh, I, I received the card from the mail. I looked and behold, isn't that precious? Yes. Wouldn't you just like to pick her up and bite her on both of her ears? <laughs> See, she's the sweetest thing in For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Yes. 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 That's right. <laughs> yes. He's up. This God that is a jealous God started it all. Gave power to you and I, to mankind, to procreate. 
but God is the creator. And I saw this precious little angel. For you created me, my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. God did this. But can you imagine that right there was you and I. We were infants born, came from our mother's womb. At one point in time, that little angel right there was you. And it was I. Look at somebody say, ain't you cute? I'm going to make a point. Then for that little precious daughter to mature and to grow, attend kindergarten, preschool, first grade, through 12, and so on and so forth. And for that little angel that was born to serve the Lord. How many know that's why you were born? You were born. You were created in His likeness and in His image to serve the Lord. Not some dumb, dead, idle God. But the true and the living God. And when you don't, He becomes jealous. And rightfully so. Because you are His property. You and I are His creation. And He doesn't take that lightly. And now she could be involved in the crowd that's forsaken God. This little angel that you see that's so adorable. She may be in God, in, involved in some religion that's totally foreign to you and I. But it's always been the heart and the mind of God in all of His creation. When you and I, actually before you come out of your mother's womb because you're alive. You are alive. And God gave you that breath of life. Every living soul has a certain portion of God. Every soul is not a child of God, but they are the creation of God. And then when they accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, they become a child of God. But it's always in the mind of God when little infants come forth out of their mother's womb that they serve the Lord all the days of their lives. And when they don't, it causes God to become jealous. Don't you take this lightly. There's nothing light about this this morning. God is the one true God who created the world to be in fellowship with Himself. He is the only one who can satisfy the longing of our souls. All other gods, and I'm not, you're not going to misunderstand me. I'm not going to spit and splutter. Listen, all other gods are fake. Yes. All other gods are useless. All other gods are powerless and unable to hear or help the people who worship them. Listen, I'll pronounce this, Mark. I think this is right. Habakkuk. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. She called me and asked me about the enunciation of that. Listen carefully. Habakkuk. Chapter 2, verse 18 and 19. What good is an idol carved by a man? Or a cast image that deceives you? How foolish, how foolish to trust in your own creation, a God that cannot talk. That's right. That's right, man. They are dumb, useless, fake, unable to hear gods. Right. Yes. Little G gods. Yes. What sorrow. Listen, I'm telling you what the Bible says. So tired of this weak, need, slimy sugar-coated, watered-down, diluted creature, and I don't know what to do with myself. Someone asked me, I'm just going to tell you this, and I'm going to tell you this graciously and kindly. My heart goes out to this person. But I think on our Channel 10 News, the, the gentleman that was the... Uh, yes, 
meteorologist, meteorologist, someone called me and spoke with me about that just the other night. They were deeply concerned. I, I believe I understood that they go, that this gentleman uh, that's married to another man, I think they've been together for several years, been married for three years, and that have adopted two children. And I'm not getting off course here. I'm not going to lambast homosexuals. I'm not going to lambast a drunk, lambast anybody. I'm going to tell us what God's holy word said, and he is a jealous God. But I understand that two of the pastors, I suppose, that was uh, doing the eulogy or whatever, that they complimented this man. And, and if he's a good meteorologist, he needs to be complimented. But when you put people in heaven, when you say that their lifestyle was all right, and God declares it's not all right, Someone asked me this week, Pastor, well, what do you think about the pastors that released him and said that he was good and that he was in the hands of God, he was with the Lord? And my answer was this, you mean a pastor said that? The person said, yes, they did. I said, all I can tell you is that if a minister is a minister of this gospel, this person said to me, maybe the preacher just didn't know, maybe the preacher just didn't understand, but can I declare in your hearing this morning, if someone says that they are a minister of this gospel, how can you be a minister of this gospel and read this Holy Ghost, sanctified, righteous word of the living God and say it's all right for someone to break the word of God, for someone to walk away from the purity and the holiness and the righteousness of Almighty God? It's just not going to happen. Keep looking at that little darling. <laughs> what sorrows awaits you who say to wooden idols, wake up and save us? You say to speechless stone images, you say rise up and teach us. Can an idol can an idol tell you what to do? They may be overlaid with gold and silver, but they're lifeless. Inside. Oh, why would anyone want our God? God pursues us and declares us to be reconciled to Himself so that we might worship Him and that He might care for our every need. Read Matthew 6, 25-33. While God's jealousy shows us that He desires man to be reconciled to Him, His jealousy is also what brings about wrath and punishment for idolatry. It is inevitable, church. Idolatry is loving something other than God. And when this happens, God gets jealous. Yes. You can't love anything like you love God. Amen. Amen. You cannot love anything like you love God and have His favor and blessings upon your life. God will not tolerate the worship of idols. And when people do worship idols, this brings about his wrath and jealous anger. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 14 and 15. Now listen, people, maybe a couple of you think, preacher, why don't you preach more love? You can't preach more love than this. No. So, you have, so you, I, I welcome you. I welcome you to sit down with me. You see, Pastor, I want to help you. And I, I, we feel, I feel like you need to preach more love. You, you, you must help me to understand that. When you preach this great book that I hold in my hand, you can't preach any more love than that. Moses wrote in Deuteronomy, you must not, you must not, no stutter, no stammer, no surmise, speculation, wonder if so, how God feels, this is how He feels. You must not worship any of the God's of neighboring nations. Well, the Lord your God who lives among you is a jealous God. His anger, His anger 
will flare up against you and he will wipe you from the face of it. I want to say this quick. Our great country, this great nation that we live in, has opened its doors to every nation's God. Amen. God. Few, if any, gods under the sun are not represented, including Satan. Our nation, we all know this, our nation, 241 years ago, when the Constitution was written and signed, our nation was built. You know this. Our nation was built on the Word of God. Oh, I wonder how often God gets jealous. And I want to be careful. I, I think I said something to my wife. I want to be careful because sometimes I just feel like I'm standing out on a branch by myself because people just simply don't want to hear this anymore. But how are you going to escape hearing the Word of God? How are you going to escape the consequences if we don't abide in the Word of yes. God? Yes. Probably every God, certainly the majority of the gods of this world, our nation represent them in one way or another. They may not necessarily believe it, but my point being what we have done as a nation, forget politics, forget Democrat, forget left-wing liberal, forget Republicans, but our nation, as a nation that was built and founded on the Word of God, we are so far away from that. I heard Jimmy Swagger say, I don't care when you swagger, I'm not trying to promote anybody but Jesus Christ. That's the one I'm going to promote. Amen. But I did hear him say something last night or night before last, and he was making reference to he heard someone interview the pastor of the Friendly Seeker Church. I think it's been a quarter of a century ago, 25, 28 years ago. And he said, I got interested in it because they began to ask him questions. And they asked this pastor who has, I believe he said they have 30,000 people that are attending this one church. And he said, listen, I, you know, you can have a large church to preach truth. That, that, I'm, just, I'm just wanting to make my point. Why is God a jealous about? And Swagger said that he listened to this gentleman interview this pastor. And he began to ask the pastor what, what would he say would be the major reason for such a successful or such a, a huge number of people attending the church. And you may have read this, or you may have heard this, I may have said something about it, but I've never heard it where it was this uh, valid or solid. I'd read a little something here, a little something there. But he said that the, the interviewer asked the pastor, what, what would you say was the single most important thing that has caused this church to have this rapid growth? And the pastor answered the interviewer, and he said several years ago, he said, we sent out people in a, I believe he said 12 to 15 mile radius. Just circled around this city. And he said, when we got there, we went door to door. He said, we had every door. And when we knocked on the door, if they would allow us to come in, we would go in and we brought them cards to sign. And he said, but the first question we would ask them what would you like? What would you like to see in the church? What would you like to hear? And if they went to the world, they'll, they'll look and be kind of funny this morning. But the church, just, just like we go here, you probably have done this over the years, and you knock on doors, put little door hangers, and invite them to a revival or whatever that was going on here. But they entered into these homes. And the pastor said when they asked us, that was one of the first questions, that we asked them, what would you like to see in a church? What would you like to hear in a church? What would you like to see take place in the church? 
And their response was, they didn't want to hear anything preached about the cross. They didn't want to hear anything about the blood because it was too gory. And they, they didn't want to hear anything but what would make them feel good. I'm, I'm trying to answer this subject question this morning. Why is God a jealous God? And Swagger said, and I nearly jumped out of my seat. I'm not a Swagger follower. I'm, I follow Jesus. I'm just making a statement this morning. I know we're, we're so, we like this one. We're, it's like Dr. Pepper and Pepsi and Coca-Cola. <laughs> and that's okay. I'm not, I'm not, no, I'm not going to turn swagger on. That's not, my, that's not what I'm saying. I just want us to understand. Why is God? Obviously, He is a jealous God. The Bible repeat, repeatedly decrees and declares. Yes. And His answer, this is what they say. We don't want to hear the message of the cross. We don't want to hear the message of the blood because it's too glory. We just want to hear something that makes us feel good. I don't know about you. You don't have to raise your hand. You may not care a thing in the world about this, about this message this morning. But if you're just reasonably enjoying this message, would you kind of go, yes. Amen. Did you know how sad it is that in these churches, with three and five and ten and fifteen and twenty thousand, they never hear this? You say, well, what are you going to do about it, Pastor? I'm doing what I'm going to do. If I can help you. If I, because I'm telling you, saints, it's not going to get better. I know some of you look at me kind of funny. You say that a lot of the Pentecostal movement now, we're just in to feel good. I heard a preacher on TV last night preaching in... A, a, French, the French language, and it was being interpreted. He was preaching on the Holy Spirit. He was preaching on speaking in tongues, and you know what this minister said? He said, no one can live a Christian life unless he or she speaks in tongues. <clears throat> Why is God a jealous God? When you make a statement like that, you're taken away from what the Word of God teaches. Tongues and speaking in tongues, you know this, has absolutely nothing to do with your salvation. Only the cross. Only the message of the cross. Only, only, only the blood of the Lamb of God. Nothing else. Paul, I speak in tongues more than you all. But it has nothing to do with speaking in tongues. It has something to do with this God that is a jealous God. He's not going to have it any other way. He's not going to change Leviticus and Romans 1 for the gay community. He's not going to do it. You say, Pastor, they'll hate your guts. who is jealous of his wife giving her attention and her love to someone else. I'm not going to have you giving your love to anyone else. No other God. No other religion. However, his jealousy is directly connected with and for our good. I feel good about it. I thought I began to understand this more clearly. I feel good that God would be jealous over me if I have a 
mental breakdown to fall off, fall after some dead pot. Yes. He's not going to have it. He will not have it. No. Worshiping God alone is always best for us, and God knows that. Thus, He has so woven His plan of redemption that He is glorified in our happiness and in our well-being, which can only truly happen when we are in communion with Him. Read Ephesians 1, 3 to 10. Quickly, despite man's unfaithfulness to God. Wow, Lord God. Amen. What a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God. Despite His unfaithfulness to God, God was not content to let him worship powerless gods he ever will be. Nor did he commit everyone to destruction. Instead, he sent Jesus to provide reconciliation between God and mankind. 2 Corinthians 5 and 18, read that. God wants man to be reconciled to him, and he wants man to become what he created him to be. Listen closely. A God who does not need us. I know we get, we think, wow, we have arrived. He uses us because He loves us. But God really has needed us. I tried to find in some of my old uh, records, some of my old sermons, how Adam Clark defined God. It would blow your mind. A God who does not need us, a God who is perfect in all things, wants us and our love and our adoration. Deuteronomy 6, 5, and 6, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. Wow. I'm not going to ask you to stand or display your hand. But Moses said under the inspiration of God, you must love. You must love. It's an imperative. It's not a suggestion. It's not a request. He's not even asking us how we feel about it. He said, yeah, you have to. You have to. You must love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, all your soul, yes. and all your strength. And it seems like we're getting fewer and far apart. Amen. That saddens me. And we all struggle. Well, who all know that? And he said, and you must, again, not a request, mm -hmm. not a question, not asking how do any of us feel about it? God just inspired Moses. He wrote, You must commit yourself wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. I wonder what the definition of wholeheartedly is today. Certainly in the world, we know there is no wholeheartedly to God in the world. But I wonder what the definition of wholeheartedly is among the people. <coughs> Even the people of God. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And Jesus said primarily the same thing in, I think it was Matthew, Luke 2 or 3 of the Gospels. He said primarily the same thing. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. Yes. And you must, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must commit yourself wholly, wholeheartedly to these commandments I am giving you today. Yes. I'm going to close with this statement or this phrase. What other God, what other God mm -hmm. expresses this kind of desire? Mm -hmm. What other deity does not need man? Listen carefully. What other God expresses this kind of desire? What other deity does not need man and yet entered into an intimate covenant relationship with Him. Man, that makes me want to jump three feet in the air. I just... Whew. Maybe everybody didn't hear that. What other God expresses this kind of desire to have communion with His creation? What other deity does not need man and yet, a lot of these gods, they have to have somebody carry them around. The little Buddhas that you see sitting in Chinese restaurants, not against the Chinese, they're not. See, isn't that awful how we got to almost defend? I'm going to stop doing that. I'm just going to say what I got to say, what's on my heart, and hope you'll receive it. Amen. 
But I, I love that. And I want that to give you spirit. We're going to be dismissed. We're not coming back tonight. So uh, I, I want this to really get into your heart. Why is God a jealous God? What other, what other God expresses this kind of desire? He, he loves getting up with you in the morning. He, he loves lying down with you at night. He loves when he hears your little voice. You say, oh God, I'm having such a tough day. <laughs> he don't love that you're having a tough day. He just loves you. You say, oh God, I'm having a rough day. What other God, ex what other God right. expresses that kind of desire? But I really, there's something about this next statement. I am just about finished. What other deity does not need man and yet enter into an intimate covenant relationship with Him. There's no other God like the God of the Bible who loved us before we were even able to love Him back and who continually pursued us when we were deep in sin and so far, far away from Him. We all know Romans 5 and 8. But God showed His great love for us by sending Christ to die for us yes. while yes. we were yet in our still sinners. Yes. What a beautiful, wonderful Savior. Would you stand? We have.